Kanding. A land of magical landscapes. Wondrous scenery. Bursting with life. The perfect place to while away your summer holidays. Here, at the southernmost tip of Taiwan, facing the Great Pacific Ocean, Kanding. On a scorching summer day in southern Taiwan, the lands of Kanding are craving the rainy season to come. Finally, the clouds devour the merciless sun. Great rolls of thunder accompany flashes of lightning that strike over Kanding's iconic Dajian Mountain. It's been months since the last heavy rain. The bone-dry coral thirstily drinks up the first of the fat raindrops. Kanding is simply too dry. As the rain continues, it soon soaks the ground and feeds into the small crevices below. These are home to Kanding's famous land crabs that have been patiently awaiting the rainy season. Red, orange, yellow, purple. These wonderfully colored crabs resurface from their hiding places and scramble to the shoreline, as if called by the moon and the tides, to the threshold of a magical journey through life. Crabs first appeared during the late Jurassic period, 140 million years ago, as aquatic creatures. Today, however, after generation upon generation of evolution, they can be commonly found on land. But how did they achieve such a feat? Land crabs use specially evolved gills. This circulating aquatic respiratory system allows them to trap seawater to keep their gills moist so they can breathe on land. Look closely at the cheeks of this metasisarma and you'll discover many fine bristles. The crab keeps them moist with seawater through an outlet duct just below its eyes. At this film of water, the gills exchange carbon dioxide for the precious oxygen the crab needs. It traps seawater for its gills through a water inlet duct at the base of its large pinchers. This special adaptation allows him to breathe on land for long periods. Scientists have found that Kanding National Park's Back Bay, the coastal forest of Banana Bay, the river mouth at Gangko Shi and Chufeng Bi are all ecological hotspots for land crabs. Especially the coastal forest of Banana Bay, which is home to nearly 30 species of land crabs more than anywhere else in the world. The locals of Kanding 
call the land crabs dry cowboys. Sunshine, beach, waves, and laughter. These beaches of Kanding are a popular destination with holidaymakers and for water sports. But once the sun goes down, the tide sweeps in and washes away all trace of the day's tourists. A magnificent moon breaks over the horizon and ascends into the sky. The ocean shimmers in the moonlight that bathes the sands of Kanding in its soft glow. Biologists have found that female crabs lay their eggs at night between full moon and new moon during the rainy season. The different crabs all have their own unique style for laying eggs. This miniature Metasi Sarma Aubrey crab plonks into the water off the steep edge of a coral reef. Then lays its eggs as it swims along. They're really quite adorable. Such large numbers of eggs and hatchlings naturally attract many predators. And only a lucky few will survive their first month as hatchlings at sea. The tiny crabs experience several stages of metamorphic change during this period. Then finally, they return to the shore. Born at sea, these tiny creatures are about to start a new chapter of life on land. The gentle nighttime breezes of summer carry the subtle fragrance of sea poison blossoms to attract matchmaker moths for pollination.
and with the sunrise, the blossoms fall to the coastal forest floor. If you listen carefully, you can hear the rustle of crabs scavenging among the leaf litter. Look closer, and you'll find all manner of crabs feasting on the sea poison blossoms. Metacesarma obesum and Metacesarma aubrey are minute creatures. At just three centimeters across, these tiny animals feed upon the humus of the forest, devouring fallen flowers, fruit, and leaves. For the most part, land crabs are detritus feeders. They are integral to the recycling of plant matter and refertilization of the forests. So if finding food is not a problem, what niches have land crabs found? In the trunks of the sea poison trees of the coastal forest live tree crabs. Until they were first discovered at Kunding National Park, this species had never been recognized elsewhere in the world. Scandarma linto is another new crab species that has mastered the art of tree climbing. They hide within the linto tree's leaves and become active among the leaves in the evening. Interestingly, by hiding among the crevices in the leaves, they are protected from predators by the sharp linto leaves. Tree crabs and Scandarma linto live exclusively within the trees of the coastal forest, only climbing down to lay their eggs in the sea during the breeding season. Cenobita are very active. They carry seashells for protection and frequent the coastal forest. If shells are not available, then any old thing will do, even a broken bottle top. Burgus latro are the world's largest invertebrates. They are certainly unique in appearance, and they have a broad range from trees to scavenging the undergrowth. In fact, land crabs have a wide variety of habitats. Some live close to the sea, while others spread further afield. Some build homes among the dampness of the seashore, and some prefer it drier. There are those that live underground, while others live amongst the rocks. The coastal forest is akin to an apartment building for these land crabs. They come in all shapes and sizes, each species occupying a different role and place, yet they all share the same roof, the canopy of the Banana Bay coastal forest. In fact, this coastal forest boasts the greatest variety of land crabs found anywhere in the world. It is a perfect example of resource sharing within an ecosystem. With finding food and a place to live out of the way, the only thing left to explain is how these creatures grow. Crabs have a hard outer shell called an exoskeleton. As their shells do not grow with their bodies, they must shed them once in their lifetimes. Since the ocean is already rich in calcium, Ocean crabs need only retain the chitin and protein of their old shells. Land crabs, however, must retain calcium as well as chitin and protein from their old shells.
Before shedding their shells, land crabs break down the calcium of their old shells into calcium ions, which are transported through the bloodstream to the stomach, where they are stored as calcium stones. In the stomach, the stones are reabsorbed as the calcium needed for rebuilding the shell. Taiwan's booming economy and tourism industry has led to the land crab's habitat at Banana Bay being split in two. This has made the female crab's lives much harder. Every summer, Kunding is packed with tourists and traffic races along the Kunding Highway. After dark, something is moving among the brush on either side of the highway. Countless pairs of eyes watch the traffic passing back and forth. They are carefully awaiting the right moment to cross the road. The female crabs and the hundreds of thousands of tiny lives they are carrying are at the mercy of the passing vehicles. Imagine how dangerous it must be for these female crabs to climb over ditches and cross this road. For them to climb a 50 centimeter ditch would be the equivalent of us having to climb a 20 meter wall. And the 20 meter wide Kunding Highway would be the same as crossing a 400 meter wide busy road. Naturally, many never make it and are killed on the two to three minute road crossing. In fact, the Kunding Highway is well known as the final destination for many wild animals, such as crabs, hares, snakes, and even birds. Even if they survive the dangerous Kunding Highway and make it to the rugged coral reef shoreline, they still face all the dangers that Mother Nature can provide. Baked under Kunding's summer sun, these reefs are dauntingly hot. The female crabs, heavy with hundreds of thousands of eggs, must climb burning reefs ten times their height. That's why these miniature Metasisarma aubrey produce bubbles at their gills for better oxygen exchange, or they'd be too exhausted to make the journey. Incredibly, the females finally make it to the sea. After all that they've been through, it's a small miracle they ever make it at all. But this is far from the end, and many predators lie in wait. The land crab's life is a hard journey, and Kunding entails many natural and man-made challenges from predators. To the burning sun, power of the sea, and threat of passing cars, or simply being picked up by people. Therefore, Kunding National Park 
has commissioned scientists for a number of years to examine the best means of managing the land crab populations. Research into ecological resource conservation facilities and tests on habitat reconstruction have been conducted. This has stimulated more land crab conservation and awareness activities in recent years. Efforts in road traffic control, including reducing the number of available lanes and having volunteers escort the females across the road, have made a significant difference to crab survival during migration and even losses from predators. The park hopes these measures will allow the crabs and people to coexist in a sustainable manner and that the female crabs will be able to deliver their eggs more successfully to the ocean. So the next time you are in Kanding, do remember to slow down and keep an eye out for the land crabs, especially the females who may be carrying their eggs across the road. You are more than welcome to pull over and escort these mothers across the road. Make sure you share the magical story of their journey with your friends and family and give a salute out to such motherly love. Let's all pray for the hundreds of thousands of little ones and wish them luck in returning to their birthplace on the moonlit coast of Kanding in the future. May their journey and story continue forever.